what a day! What a lovely day! How in the hell are they making a knife this good for this tiny of a price? Jesus. Hey guys, Jim here. Welcome in once again. Today we're going to take a look at something entirely different than almost anything I've ever shown you on my channel, mainly because of the price point. And I'm going to say that first, $81. $81. Um, I believe, if I'm not mistaken, that this will take the trophy as the least expensive knife I have ever reviewed. And you're probably thinking to yourself, Jim, I come here to watch reviews on custom knives and rare knives and high-end production and really crazy cool stuff. Are you going cheap on us? Ah, no, I'm not. Um, this, is, this is a knife that I think is going to surprise a lot of people. Uh, full disclosure, Civivi reached out to me and asked me if I'd like to review uh, a couple of their knives. Um, they've seen my reviews. They know who I am. I've, I've dealt with them with Wii knives before. Um, they, they like my reviews. They, they think I'm uh, incredibly handsome and charming and that I smell pretty good too. Uh, I may have made up a few of those things. But uh, the point of the matter is they did come to me and say, hey, would you like to check out a couple of our knives? Because I think that they know that this is not the the level of knife that I typically buy and that I would have in my collection. So the only way that I would really ever be able to review a Civivi is uh, if I borrowed it from another collector or a collector said, hey, I think you got to check this out. Let me send it to you. Uh, or if the brand sent it out to me. I'm going to tell you right now, I kind of wish I hadn't have looked past them for so long because uh, I may have missed some really cool knives in the past that they don't make anymore, and uh, I kind of feel bad about that. So let's get into this. This is the Civivi Mini Asticus. Uh, no, it's not Ass to Kiss. It's Asticus. Um, their Instagram right now, I don't know if it got hijacked or something weird happened. I'm still going to put the Instagram down there on the bottom. But as of the time of this recording, they don't have control over it or they can't access it or something weird. Uh, but I'm sure very soon they're going to have that resolved. Now, before I get to the knife, since you've already seen the pictures of it, uh, I want to show you the packaging. Um, I thought this was pretty damn cool that they have stickers for each of their individual models and you get a free sticker with it. I really, really, really like that idea. So super cool there. Um, oh, is this a sticker too? I think this might be a sticker as well. And they would like you to uh, share your experiences if you like your purchase. And this is, read this before opening the knife. Oh, well, I didn't do that. Should I have done that? I can't even get it open. Oh, this is your warranty. And I guess it tells you how to flip open and unlock your knife. And then uh, a really nice suede style microfiber cloth. All that out of the way, let's get into the knife itself because I, when I chose this off of their website, I looked at it and went, that can't be actual real copper. First off, it is. It is true, solid copper scales and there is a serious amount of heft to this knife. I mean, this is a heavy, heavy knife and we are going to weigh it in, in just a few minutes. But I, I was really intrigued by the finish on it because I really hadn't seen, in person anyway, a uh, any copper that was done in this finish. They're calling it a black hand rub over the over the copper, and I, I was instantly drawn to it. And when I got it in hand and I first opened the box, I was like, "Holy crap! That looks even nicer in person." So if you're buying based solely on looks, 
you absolutely have to have this knife. It's that is re- it is really gorgeous. I really love the scales. They did a fantastic job on the finishing, and as you saw in the photography, I took a different route uh, because I, I think it's a very elegant kind of look, uh, a dark elegance, if that makes any sense to you. And I thought that was really cool. So let's get this bad boy open and let you see what it looks like. Then we'll talk about the specs, okay? So there is the blade deployed. And overall, it is a very handsome shape, design, very clean, very minimalistic, very neutral ergonomics on the handle. Really love the grinds, really love the blade shape. This is really wonderfully designed. I, I am extraordinarily impressed by the design of the knife. Now, is this knife perfect? No, and we're going to get into the pros and cons here in a minute. Um, you know, there's always pros and cons. It could be a $5,000 custom-made knife, and there could be pros and cons, so don't take that the wrong way. So let's get into the specs, then we'll do some uh, close-up detail looks and uh, start playing with the action and all that kind of good stuff. So here's the deal with this knife. Uh, you're looking at a liner lock flipper with an overall length of 7.55 inches, blade length of three and a quarter inches. The blade steel is 10 CR15 COMOV. <laughs> That's a mouthful, isn't it? And it's a steel I have zero experience with. I have never owned a knife in that steel. Couldn't tell you if it's good or bad, but they have it rated at 59 to 61 Rockwell. Um, that's a very big variance. I'd rather it say 59 to 60 or 60 to 61. So your mileage may vary. It may have a decent amount of time before you have to resharpen it, or it may have a brittle edge because it's it's you know it's it's on one end of the end of the spectrum to the other end of the spectrum. I can't tell you. Uh, and I have not obviously hard used this knife to give you that feedback. Uh, anybody that is uh, a collector that has a few knives in this steel that would like to chime in down below, please do so. Uh, it is hollow ground with a thickness of 0.12 inches. Yes, that's pretty darn slim, 12 thousandths of an inch. Uh, frame is 0.47 inches, so just under a half an inch in the overall thickness, that's not including the clip. Uh, the scales, as I mentioned before, are solid copper with this black rub finish. The liners are stainless steel. The clip is stainless steel. The clip is reversible left to right hand. The hardware is stainless steel. And your bearings are ceramic. It does have a ceramic pivot. Now, it's not entirely drop free because ugh, the liner has a lot of tension to it. Um, and this happened with the last knife that I reviewed as well because it had stainless steel liners. The thing with steel, and the reason why uh, we prefer titanium, what I should say is why we pay extra for titanium liners, is the fact that titanium is very springy. So you can bend it and it wants to spring back to exactly where it was before. So you can really crank it over, you can really crank it over the other way, um, and you can have a very low tension uh, or a big relief of the tension on that lock and it will still do its job. With stainless steel, it's not as springy. So when they bend it over this way, it wants to stay over this way. So you're fighting and you'll feel that pressure as you're pushing that over. And what that means is the detent that's on the liner is pushing very hard against the blade which creates a lot of friction, which slows down the action. Well, I shouldn't say slows it down because it is lightning fast, uh, but it provides enough friction that you have to give it, and it's not just a couple little jiggles, you have to give it a few really good shakes to get it to close. But yes, it is smooth, it just has a lot of tension on it, but it's not gritty at all. You can feel it, and it's, it's wonderfully smooth, those ceramic bearings are absolutely doing their job. Oh, I forgot I have the Civivi cloth. I can get my fingerprints off of there. There we go. Um, you'll notice if I if I fully, I already cut myself once doing this, but if you fully release that lock, it drops, drops free. So it is the tension on the blade. 
Um, and that's why this is $81, because you have steel instead of titanium for the liners. You have steel instead of titanium for the clip. You have a bent spring clip instead of a milled clip or some sort of sculpted clip. Um, you have what I'm going to assume, because they do not list it, I'm going to assume that this backspacer is black G10. Yeah, it is. Um, and then you have a lanyard post in here, which I really like. I like the fact that you can run a lanyard through there if you like lanyards. But if you don't like lanyards, you don't have a big open hole or slot or anything interrupting the look of the knife's design. Um, you'll notice there is a hole here, and that's because the clip is reversible. I mean, it's better than having a big old milled out pocket, I suppose. Uh, but honestly, I, I would love if they would just give you an, an extra screw to just put in there and, you know, you just don't have a hole in your scale. Pivot's nicely done. It's a flat face pivot. We're starting to see that a lot lately. So it's uh, almost completely flush with the scale, with the Civivi logo. I love that because that means there is no billboarding on the blade. The blade is completely sterile. There's nothing on it. And it looks very, very handsome that way. I really like that. They did a really great job on the hollow grind. The satin uh, finish on the grind looks great. The blade comes down to an extremely fine edge. So you're going to love that. You'll notice when the blade dropped on me, uh, cut me a little bit. And it's a very lightweight blade because, as I mentioned, uh, the blade thickness is only 12 thousandths of an inch. So it's very, very skinny. Uh, that relates to, what is it, three millimeters? So it's very, very thin for the overall blade stock. And then they've hollow ground it. They've swedged it. So there's not a lot of weight to the blade. All of the weight, oh my God, is in the handle. As a matter of fact, we're going to go ahead and weigh this bad boy right now so we could talk exactly about how heavy this is. 5.1 ounces. Now that may not sound like a lot because I brought out a lot of knives out here that are heavier. But granted, those knives are much larger, three and a half, three and, a, uh, three and three quarter, four inch blades that are five to six ounces. This is a three and a quarter inch blade at 5.1 ounces. Just for comparison's sake, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to show you a comparison here on this custom. This is a uh, Hog House Knives Model T. And yes, there's a considerable price difference. This is, what was this, like $700? And uh, this is $81. So, yeah, there's a significant price difference. But that's not the point. The point is the weight. 2.9 ounces in, in a very comparable size. And we'll do a side-by-side -side comparison. On the EMP EDC Nimble, 3.7 ounces. Another comparable size knife, 2.8 ounces on the Vero Engineering. Um, on the little, little... Terzola here, we're looking at 2.9 ounces. So you see, even uh, even like the uh, the Penguin, 3.2 ounces. So when you pop that bad boy on there at 5.1 ounces, you're like, yikes! Oh, <sighs> that's a heavy boy. But you've got to realize the the scales are solid copper. In the versions that aren't copper, that are just in G10, they're a full ounce lighter. They're 4.1 ounces. So that's something to keep in mind. Me, personally, I went for looks on this one. I went, wow. I don't like copper, by the way. I am not a copper fan because I don't like, I don't like copper, brass, bronze. I don't like things that patina. If I'm going to get something that's, that's shiny and polished and pretty, I want it to stay that way. I don't want it to start getting muddy looking and brown and green and just nasty looking. What attracted me to this was you have this black rub satin that they're calling it going through it and, the, and you only really see the copper around the, the outer perimeter. And I dig that. Now, I don't know how that finish is achieved. Um, again, they're just calling it black wash copper. I don't know how it's achieved. The times that I've worked with copper personally on the knives that I make, I mirror polished them. So... I, I haven't done anything like that, so I have no idea. The knives that I've owned that have been in brass and, and uh, copper and, and bronze and stuff like that, they've all been polished as well. And I didn't keep them very long because I don't like how they patina. So 
I'm not exactly sure how the, uh, the, the finish work is done, but it really is very, very nice. So you've got a lot of weight in the copper. You have a lot of weight in the steel liners. If they were titanium, it would be lighter. A little bit of weight in the clip, but they have skeletonized it uh, to a degree, and it's not very thick, so you know it's not really all that heavy. As far as how it feels in the hand, uh, because of the shape of this clip, you feel it. Um, there's a little bit of a hot spot there. It's not bad, but you notice that it's there. Now, as far as cutting ability, the blade shape is fantastic for that. When you need to go to resharpen it, you've got a uh, very large choil here that will allow for ease of resharpening. They did a great job on that. Really beautiful blade finish. I have to just give them credit because that is beautiful work on that blade finish. How close can we get on that? Let's see. Can we get it to focus that close? Hold on. Trying to tell my camera that it needs to focus on something a lot closer. There we go. Let's get a good look at that. That is really, really nice finish work. And again, man, that copper with that black wash looks really, really good. Now, they did skeletonize the liners to reduce as much weight as they possibly could. They did it on both sides. They did a, an admirable job on that. So with this copper, it's not going to patina in a way that it's going to change how it looks. It looks this way straight out of the box. So I was uh, immediately very, very attracted to these copper scales. I think it looks fantastic. The G10 versions, while they're nice, um, I don't know if that's exactly what uh, that I would actually carry one. If I was looking for a great budget knife that was attractive, I think this is a great way to go. I definitely see why people are impressed with these Civivi knives. I have a Knox that I'll be reviewing very shortly, so uh, keep your eye out for that. Let's give you some size comparisons. This was that custom Hog House Knives Model T. Uh, it is only a tiny, tiny touch smaller than the Model T. Putting it up against the QSP Penguin. That's a very popular knife right now. Uh, it's a just a little bit larger than the QSP Penguin. Up against the EMP EDC Nimble. Oops. Sizable compared to the uh, Nimble. Up against the Terzola ATCF Lite. A little bit bigger than the ATCF Lite. And up against the Mini Synapse from Vero Engineering. Good amount of size larger than that as well. So, uh, as you see, this is a very compact, but it doesn't... Very compact design, but it doesn't seem as small as it is. It's got a pretty sizable handle. So what they've done is they brought the, the blade to right there, and you've got a little bit of room, probably four or five millimeters. Come on. All you got to do is focus. That's it. Come on. There you go. Good boy. So you've got a little bit of room there between the tip of the blade and the backspacer. I think overall... For $81, $81, I mean, how can you say no to this? It's a crazy, crazy deal. Do you feel the difference? Uh, listen, unless you're a high-end knife collector, if, if you're normally collecting um, under $150, this is the type of knife that you're used to. You're used to having stainless steel liners, so that's not going to bother you. You're used to having a steel that's not a super steel, so that's not going to bother you. You're probably not used to an action that's this good or a blade that's uh, this well finished. So you're definitely going to get an upgrade there. For those of us that collect into higher end knives, you know, four or five hundred dollars and up, you're going to notice where the corners were cut in the weight because of the, all of the steel components versus having titanium. And the fact that you don't have something exotic like uh, Magna Cut or S90V or, uh, you know, something like that for your blade steel. But to be perfectly honest with you, most people don't use their knives in a way that will really test the metal of their steel. 
uh, really fully anyway. The only gripe I have about this knife, I have no complaints about really anything on it. The only gripe I have is because of how thin the blade stock is. That means that the flipper tab also is going to be very, very thin. So that in combination with the very sharp jimping, which they need because you need to really be able to hit that. Uh, it's a little bit sharp on the fingers. Doesn't bother me. I, I have tough finger pads from, from making knives all these years. But um, for somebody that may have somewhat delicate fingers, uh, playing with it for a long period of time, you're going to feel that. It's going to start feeling like it's cutting into you. And same thing with how thin the liner is and the way they chose to notch it so that you have some grip. So they're doing these things so that you have traction on those two components, but because of the thinness of those, those components, they're gonna feel a little bit sharp. And that's just the nature of the beast. If uh, the materials were 25% thicker for each of them, this really probably wouldn't even be a call out. So anyway, that's my thoughts on the knife. I think for $81, uh, you're an absolute fool for not owning one. I think it is an incredible knife and very, 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 very handsome. They've got a lot of different flavors and colors in G10 and stuff like that. Um, they've also made brass. I liked this uh, black wash copper. I think it is <laughs> absolutely gorgeous. It is a very, very handsome knife. And uh, I'll be honest with you, I didn't think that either of the two knives that I uh, asked Civivi to send me were going to be keepers. I, I'm, I'm actually going to keep this. I think it's that cool. Am I going to carry it often? No, probably not because it does have some weight to it. And I have alternatives in this size that are much more lightweight. Um, but i tell you one thing. If I know that I'm going to go out today, I want this size of a knife. And there's a high probability that I'm going to have more hardcore cutting tasks, maybe instead of beating on a $750 custom, beating on an $81 knife that if something bad happens to it, I can replace for such a little amount of money, might be a really, really good choice. And you know what? That's something I think a lot of people probably need uh, as an option in their collection. And by the way, the uh, the point is very pointy. It will uh, It will stab you when you don't close it properly and you get too quick with it. So yeah, there it is. So Sharp definitely wins on that one. All right, guys, I'm out of here for now. Thank you, for, as always, for joining me, and I'll see you on the next video.